I'm Mark Fletcher, Chief Architect with Avaya Public Safety Solutions, and this is WebRTC and E911, the impact on public safety communications as presented at the WebRTC3 Conference and Expo, November 20th, 2013, at the Santa Clara Convention Center. Before we talk about new and modern communications with emergency services, we need to take a look at E911 and understand where we are and how we got here. At 2 p.m. on Friday, February 16, 1968, the very first 911 call was placed from the mayor's office in Haleyville, Alabama. Next year, 911 will turn 46 years old. But in those years, very little has been done to enhance 911. The purpose of 911 was to provide a single number access for police, fire, and medical. Prior to its existence, each individual city or town often maintained a separate number for each individual service. Not only did you need to understand where you were geographically, you needed to know the individual number for the service that was required. 911 provided a consistent number access, and many agencies consolidated, and although the unique agency telephone numbers remained, callers could dial an easy-to-remember 911, causing their call to be routed based on their location. When we look at the challenges of today's 911 network, the primary factor is that telephone numbers no longer equal the user's location. Cellular telephones provided user mobility and nomadic access to the public switch telephone network. Where home telephones had been routed based on a civic address, cellular telephones required routing based on geospatial coordinates. While cellular devices offer X and Y coordinates, in a high-rise building, the Z, or altitude, is extremely important. Another problematic factor is that cellular location via GPS has very poor performance indoors if it works at all. When we look at next generation 911, we worry about information overload to the dispatchers. With today's environment, we actually have information underload. The network today is analog-based, has extremely little intelligence, and for all intents and purposes, has reached its limits to pass information. The current Alley database has a single 20-character field that can be used for additional information. In contrast, today's devices are intelligent endpoints that are enabled with multimodal and multimedia communications. In addition to being aware of their surroundings, they can provide vast amounts of additional data to emergency services networks. But even though these smart devices exist, they have no way of communicating that information other than voice. Next Generation 911, or NG911, will solve this problem. So let's look at emergency communications tomorrow, where we're headed, and how we're going to get there. Next Generation 911 will actually be implemented in various successive releases. The ESINet, or Emergency Services IP Network, is an IP-enabled network that will provide a full replacement for the existing E911 functions, as well as introduce new additional features, such as interactive, multimodal messaging, policy-based routing using the device location, the call type, as well as the target PSAP status and the network status as routing criteria. Area. The network will also support the automatic acquisition of supportive data or additional information if the device has that available. Additional data feeds such as telematics and acceleration and deceleration data can plot and calculate specific needs of a patient in a motor vehicle accident. This is simply done by measuring the accelerometer data from the device or the new breed of headsets that are available today. Correlating all of this information with additional data such as resource status, caller information, and location will provide public safety dispatchers of the future an intuitive dashboard for delivering emergency services. How would you prefer to be able to reach 911? That's a question that the Federal Communications Commission Emergency Access Advisory Committee asked to nearly 3,200 users who were deaf or hearing impaired. 94% of the users responded, with nearly half wanting to use text and 35% wanting to use video. This is because American Sign Language and texting are how this group of people communicate today. However, if they need to make a 911 call, the technology isn't available. 
Let's look at NextGen 911 data correlation. Today, if I make a 911 call, the information that we have is Fletch just made a 911 call and someone needs to go see if Fletch is all right. In the future where we have data to correlate, the same incident happens and we know that Fletch just made a 911 call and the ambient temperature near Fletch is 227 degrees. Correlating those two pieces of data together results in someone needing to go see if Fletch is on fire. Devices should be able to intelligently summon for assistance based on environmental conditions or additional data. WebRTC will allow that to happen. Data and information from IP-enabled surveillance systems could detect weapons in a bank robbery, provide important EKG information from an automated external defibrillator, for example, and temperature sensors in a building can give firefighters important information while they're en route and before they enter a specific structure. Enterprise networks will be a tremendous data feed to next-generation 911 networks. Enterprise networks and PBXs are very familiar with the users on their network, the devices that they're using, the location of those devices, as well as environmental data from smart buildings, and they're able to correlate all of this event information, placing it on a server in the DMZ that will allow public safety to access that information, making better dispatch decisions based on temperature sensors, video feeds, or even physiological data from individuals. Today, 911 is in-band, voice-only information. The future will allow intelligent devices to connect to public safety through the Emergency Services IP Network, or ESINet. Next generation 911 can actually be accelerated through WebRTC by providing a standalone path to public safety or even a dual path where the voice travels over the existing legacy network, but the data that the device has passes over the ESI net and is then correlated at the 911 center. From a legislative perspective, Martha Beyer, who's an attorney that works with E911, said that if WebRTC is going to be sold or can be interpreted as delivering a replacement to traditional telephone services, for example, in a desktop device, then the 911 capabilities must be addressed. Currently in the U.S., 18 states have a reference to Multi-Line Telephone System, or PBX, E911. OSHA maintains that you must maintain a safe workplace. And the National Emergency Number Association filed very strong comments on a recent Federal Communications Commission notice of inquiry regarding the MLTS, stating that MLTS location capabilities are feasible and the FCC should begin a proceeding to establish a time frame for mandatory implementation. What's Avaya's position? Next generation emergency services have been clearly defined in both the US with NINA 08003 and Europe with NG112 LTD. Enterprise administrators must absolutely look to the future when designing emergency services in their networks. Building an architecture that is compliant now is the best possible decision from a technology and investment perspective. Several Avaya DevConnect partners have followed best practices and guidance set forth by Avaya's strategy and thought leadership in the industry. These vendors are able to provide a resilient, life safety solution that are fully compliant and in lockstep with the next generation emergency service standards of tomorrow, effectively future-proofing the customer's emergency communications infrastructure investments today. Thanks for attending this valuable session on Next Generation 911 and WebRTC. Additional resources can be found on the web at avaya.com forward slash public safety, avaya.com forward slash Fletcher, or on the Avaya Podcast Network at avaya.com forward slash APN. I'm Mark Fletcher, ENP, Chief Architect for Avaya Public Safety Solutions. Thanks for watching. This program has been brought to you by the Avaya Podcast Network. Executive Producer, Jean JT Turjan. Producer and Latin American Correspondent, Guadalupe Eugenie. The APN Legal Correspondent is Martha Beyer. And the official APN Voice Dude, Spider Harrison. I'm Mark Fletcher, Chief Architect for Worldwide Public Safety Solutions. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Avaya underscore APN and check out our landing page at avaya.com forward slash APN. For the Avaya Podcast Network, this is Fletch. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. You're listening to APN.
the Avaya Podcast Network. Find us on the web at avaya.com slash APN. 